Okay, so welcome back. This is part two in our series where we're showing you how to write a C-sharp Visual Studio application that does kind of what you see here. And this is um, an application based on a free and open source GitHub repository that is called Libre Hardware Monitor. It's a fork from Open Hardware Monitor, and it's been developed over many years. And basically what it does is it grabs data from sensors that are located on different devices on your computer, on the motherboard and in the CPU and the fans and so on. And it grabs sensor data such as you can see here, we got voltages, we got temperatures, we got fan speeds. It grabs the data from those different components and displays them here in this table. So we looked in part one, the previous video, we looked at that application, that GitHub repository, and showed how you can download it and run it and basically get what you see here. But our goal is to better understand what's going on here so that we can customize the data here. You know, most people don't need all of this data. There's like tons and tons of data here. Most people don't need all this, and you probably want to focus on a few bits of data and maybe you want to chart them, maybe you want to plot them over a period of time. Um, but the goal here is to figure out how we can take this open source library and customize it to our needs. And ultimately, we're going to come out with something like this where I am accessing this library, but all I'm doing is I'm grabbing uh, the core temperature for my CPU and every second I'm updating it, as you can see up here, and I'm keeping track of the maximum. And also I am plotting in a C-sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms charts, plotting the data every second over a period, in this case, five minutes. You can customize that to whatever you want. So this is our goal ultimately. And then from there, we can customize it more as we want. Now in this video, what we're gonna do is we are going to start out with a blank c -sharp Visual Studio application, and we're going to reference this library, the Libre Hardware Monitor library that we talked about in the last video, and we are going to see how we can grab one bit of data from this and display it, and then in a future video, we're going to do that every second or whatever you want, and we're going to show how you can chart it, do the scrolling chart, and so on. So I've started up Visual Studio 2022, and I'm going to create a new project. And it's going to be a blank Windows Forms .NET Framework C Sharp. Hit Next. And I'm going to name it Libre Hardware Monitor Lib Test 2 and .NET Framework 4.72 Create. And here is my C Sharp solution. I'm going to hit F7 to get to the code. And the first thing we need to do, if you look at the documentation for Libre Hardware Monitor, we have to add the Libre Hardware Monitor Lib NuGet package to the application. So we go up here to the solution, right click, manage NuGet packages, hit browse, and search for Libre Hardware Monitor Lib, hit project, and then latest stable install. And we're going to have package reference in project file, OK. And we have to accept the license. And we look at the outputs. Everything worked OK. And now what we have to do is we have to add this sample code that they give us. And basically, we've got a class, update visitor. And we've got a method, public void monitor. So first, we will copy the class. And I will put it down here and paste. Then I'll copy the method. And down here under the form one, I'll paste that. And now we have the code for this to run. And all we need to do is call this monitor method. And that should do it. Now keep in mind, if you look through here, it's doing console.writeLine. I want to set this up so that it goes to a text box here. So I'm going to say toolbox. I'm going to get a text box. I'm going to change the single line to multi-line. I'm going to change the font here to make it more visible. I'll pick a number 12 font 
and I will make it longer. I'll move this here and expand this a bit. So now all we have to do is go through and change all of the console write lines to textbox1.append text. So I'll go through and do that. And then when we run it, we should have the results in the um, text box. Okay, so now I've updated all of the output. I've got all of these console.write lines converted to textbox1.append text. So I've done that one, two, three, four times. And the only other thing I need to do is make sure I called this method that actually does the grabbing of all the data. So here under initialize component, I will say monitor and then run it. And here you go. You've got all of the data in this text box. I do need to change this so that it is a, um, has vertical scroll bars. Run it again. And there's all the information. You can see sensor. It's got the name. It's got a value. So here is all the data. Now we can go through and we can reverse engineer where that comes from and how we can grab that and how we can chart it. So now let's compare the results that we got from our Libre hardware monitor with, for example, HW Info. So here in the hardware monitor, we've got um, our motherboard. There's no information. We've got a bunch of stuff for our CPU. It's got 16 cores. So it's got a bunch of stuff here. Then we've got memory. Then we've got, I've got two GPUs. It's got the two GPUs here. And then it's got an Ethernet and a virtual box. Compare that to the HW Info, the motherboard, there's nothing. We've got a bunch of CPU stuff. We've got some memory timings. Uh, we scroll down. We've got the Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard. It's got a bunch of voltage rail information, which we don't have over here. And here it's got all of my hard drives. I got some SSDs. It's got a bunch of information. It's got the two GPUs. It's got the network adapter. So none of the hardware for the SSDs or hard drive is included here. So keep in mind, what we have here is probably not going to be the optimum for getting all the information. The goal here is to make it so that it meets our needs and we can customize it to our needs. If there's data out there for our equipment that's not here, then we can add it. So just keep that in mind. Now, that being said, keep in mind that in this particular case, if I don't run this application as administrator, then a lot of the information will not be available to me. So what I've done is I have rerun this Libre hardware monitor application as administrator. And now you can see a lot of things show up that weren't there before. So I've got the sub hardware. I've got the motherboard with a bunch of things. I've got a lot of CPU stuff, memory, GPU. And here I've got my SSDs. Now suddenly I've got information about them. So I've got a lot more information here. So it's very important that you keep in mind this particular application, this Libre hardware monitor, you have to run it as administrator if you want access to all of the sensor data. Now, again, that doesn't mean it's going to have that all available because of versions and maybe the equipment's too old or too new. But just keep in mind that you've got to run it as administrator if you want to get all the data. So now let's compare the results we get after we have run uh, Visual Studio as administrator and we're getting what we hope is all of the data coming from the sensors. Let's compare the Libre results from HW Info, and specifically I want to look at the die temperature of the CPU. And if we look down the list of all the CPU data, in our case a Ryzen 7 1700, I think these are utilization numbers, but if you look way down the bottom, we've got a sensor core T control T die value of 48.25, presumably that's degrees C. And if you look over here at HW Info, we've got a CPU T control T die of 45.5. This is being updated every second or whatever. So right there, we have a pretty good idea that this name being grabbed in the uh, Libre hardware information app 
matches what we see here and maybe we can grab this one value on a regular basis like every second and display it in our Windows form and figure out how we can do a timer to grab that every second and then maybe we can plot it. So let's focus on this T-Control T-Die and see if we can access it by grabbing the value with this name as it comes in and try to plot it. Okay, so we're back in our Visual Studio C Sharp, our Libre hardware monitor solution. And again, I've, I've run Visual Studio as administrator in order to get this to work. And I'm going to make a few changes so that all we see is a printout of that t control t die temperature. So all I'm going to do is for all of these computer is enabled components, I'm going to leave is CPU enabled true. That was true before, but I'm going to change all the rest of them to false because I don't care about the GPU, the memory. I just want to get information about the CPU. So I'm going to say that's enabled, everything else is false. So that's the one set of changes I've made. The rest of the changes are down here where I comment out all of the textbox onepend text that we added for everything except for when we go through the sensors. For each I sensor in hardware.sensors, uh, presumably this is where we're going to get our T-Control T-Die temperature sensor value. And I'm just adding an if statement. So if sensor.name, now before we were just printing out sensor.name and sensor.value, and it was T-Control T-Die and the temperature 48 degrees C. So all I'm saying is, well, only if the name contains core space t control slash t die then will i print out the value the sensor value so all of the other printouts are gone i'm just going to print out only if we have that name containing that so i'm going to run that and here is our result we get one value sensor core t control t die value is 45.375 so at this point we have succeeded in being able to grab a desired sensor and value. And now what we can do is we can think about, well, maybe I can do this every second. I can have a system timer every second and print out the value. And then what I can do is I can add that to a chart, a C-sharp WinForms chart, and I can every second add to that chart and have a scrolling chart over 30 seconds or 30 minutes or whatever I want. So let's take a look at how we can grab this sensor value only for the sensor and save it and chart it. Okay, so now what I've done is I have modified this form a bit because I only want one line on here that has the uh, sensor name and the value. I've also added a start button and that's going to start a timer that's set for every one second. When I press the start button, it's going to enable this timer and here's the timer I drag and dropped here. And if I select it, you can see I put interval of 1000 milliseconds. And this start button is going to enable that. So you double click on the start button, you double click on the timer. And what you will get here in your code is you will get these button start click event. And I just do timer one enable is true. And then the timer one tick. So every second, it's going to call that monitor method we were using before. And we're just going to modify that a little bit so that all it does is it reads that one value of CPU temperature. So all I've done is, again, I disabled this calling the monitor method when I start up the form because now I want to do it with the button. Um, I've got only CPU enabled. All the rest are false. And I've basically gotten rid of all of the other code outside of the for each sensor in hardware sensors, if the sensor name contains T control T die, then I'm going to print out the sensor and the value. Instead of doing an append text, I'm just doing the, the entire text box as the sensor name, so it's going to overwrite each time. So basically I just do the same thing, sensor.name and value, sensor.value, and that's about it. So if I run it now, 
I've got my application. I hit start. Takes a bit. Core T control T die value is 46.25. Now, is that correct? Well, what I can do is I can compare it to the HW info, and here it's saying 45.75, and here it says 45.6. 55, see it's going up, it's matching this. It's not exact, but it's very close, 48. So you can see now we have the CPU temperature every second, just as we have here, and then we can expand that to whatever else we want. Um, our next step is to just put this into a C Sharp Visual Studio Windows Forms chart that scrolls, and I've done videos, many videos before on charts and how to do scrolling charts. So that's our next step to figure out how to chart this. So that's it for this one. If you're liking these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.